Today at 12 noon, I celebrated Mass at Mount St. Mary Cemetery on the Pawtucket East Providence line. And as I went into the chapel to count the amount of people there for Holy Communion, I heard a man say, oh, Bishop Evans. And it sounded like he was pleased I was there. And I said, oh, how nice. Then I heard his, his wife say to him, oh, no. As I approached this pulpit, some of you may have had interior oh no's, but it's Lent, so offer it up. <laughs> On December 22nd last, Pope Francis, in his annual Christmas address, led the members of the Roman Curia in what he described as an examination of conscience. The reason he gave for this exercise was that the Curia, like the church, cannot live without a vital, personal, authentic, and solid relationship with Christ. A member of the Curia who is not daily nourished by that food will become a bureaucrat, a formalist, a functionalist, a mere employee, a branch which withers, slowly dies, and is then cast off. So on this happy note, permit me to adapt to the priests of the Diocese of Providence on this occasion of priestly renewal and recommitment a few of the Holy Father's 15 points to ponder. The Holy Father speaks first of the disease of thinking we are immortal, immune, or downright indispensable. It is the disease of those who turn into lords and masters and think of themselves as above others and not at their service. It is often an effect of the pathology of power. Ah, yes, I see this pathology and power of, of, of power in those priests who, not content with one parish, ask Bishop Tobin for a second or even third parish to pastor. I see it in those priests who are not content to limit their weekly hospital visits to their own parishioners, but insist on accepting the responsibility of covering local hospitals once twice and even three times monthly to ensure that no Catholic, when death threatens, will be without the church's ministrations at that critical moment. Holy Father, permit me to say that the priests of the Diocese of Providence are ambitious. Ambitious not only to see Christ in others, but to bring Christ to others without counting the cost to themselves. Another criticism of the Holy Father concerns the disease of mental and spiritual petrification. It is found in those who have a heart of stone, the stiff neck, in those who in the course of time lose their interior serenity, alertness, and daring, and hide under a pile of papers, turning into paper pushers and not men of God. This is the disease of those whose hearts grow hard and become incapable of loving unconditionally the Father and our neighbor. Yet as I look upon the priests of Providence, I find not men with hearts of stone or paper pushes, but brothers reaching out to brothers and sisters, younger and older, reaching out to Catholics practicing and non-practicing, to the spiritually healthy and the spiritually ill, whether found in sacramental preparation programs or Catholic schools or religious education programs or prayer meetings for youth or mustard seed pilgrimage or welcoming the faithful to the Sunday liturgy. No, Holy Father, our priests are not perfect and perhaps they have become from time to time weary and tired. But priestly holiness does not consist in achieving perfection, 
but simply in making the effort to allow the faithful to glimpse in the face of the priest the sacred heart of Jesus. Another concern of the Holy Father is the disease of rivalry and vainglory, when appearances, the color of our clothes and our titles of honor become the primary object in life. To the best of my limited knowledge, there are not 50 shades of black, and given the rules in effect for the naming of Monsignors, it would seem that to receive such a title nowadays may be more of a death sentence than an honor. Holy Father, I see among the priests of Providence not a rivalry, but a genuine concern for one another, especially for the brother overburdened by ministering in a parish where the bills cannot always be paid on time, or in a multicultural parish where not all the needs of language and customs can be satisfied, or in a parish that has become demographically challenged and may well be in the twilight of its existence, or for priests who serve as the father of two or more parish families. The Holy Father goes on to challenge us on other diseases. He mentions the disease that is the Martha complex, excessive busyness, the disease of excessive planning and functionalism, the disease of poor coordination, on a spiritual Alzheimer's disease, on the disease of those who live a double life, on the disease of gossiping, grumbling, and backbiting, on the disease of idolizing superiors. Mm, somehow I don't think that's high up there on the list. <laughs> on the disease of indifference to others, on the disease of a lugubrious face, on the disease of hoarding, on the disease of closed circles, and finally, on the disease of worldly profit. In all seriousness, we should take to heart the Holy Father's admonitions, not taking them lightly, but like the faithful steward, taking the nova et vetera, the best of the new and the old, and reflecting on them in the silence of our hearts, in the forum of our conscience. Finally, in a moment, we priests will be invited, dare I say, challenged, to reaffirm our commitment to priestly service by renewing promises made on our ordination day in order that we may be conformed more closely to the Lord Jesus as priest and victim. Specifically, we will be asked to do so by continuing to deny ourselves in order to fulfill the sacred duties we willingly and joyfully pledge on that day when a bishop's hands were laid on us and our hands were anointed with the oil of chrism. Having taken to heart the Holy Father's examination of conscience, may we now renew our priestly commitment with the mind and heart of the one who called us, vessels of clay that we are, who set us apart and consecrated us for a work not of our, but of his own choosing.